Hi all, I'm Dan Smegrod, founder of the We Get Around Network Forum. Today is Thursday, April 8th, 2021, and you're watching WGAN-TV Live at 5. Our topic today, 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques and tips and tricks. So excited to have our guest with us, Kevin Dole. Kevin, good to see you again. Hi, Dan. Kevin is founder of Home3D.us. Uh, based in Los Angeles. He's a Matterport service provider. He is both an, an, a Matterport artist and a Matterport business person. He is doing awesome, exciting things with Matterport. Uh, 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 Kevin, I think what I'd like to do is, is, uh, is, is, is actually start with a bonus tip. It's not on your, on your list, um, but I'm gonna jump in here. I'm gonna take us to the We Get Around Network forum and I'm gonna scroll down to to today's show where we're promoting uh, th this show. So I'm going to refresh this page and that is your Matterport space there. And I notice that it automatically launches. And then as soon as it launches, it starts to actually walk you through the house. I actually think this is an advanced tip. I don't see many Matterport service providers do this. Why do you do this? How do you do this? Well, I, I do it because I know that uh, ultimately what we do is consumed by, in residential real estate, is consumed by buyers of homes, not the agents that we work for and who pay us, but buyers of the people who are excited about Matterport. That's actually one of our, you know, difficulties or challenges, if you will, because, you know, we're paid by selling agents, listing agents, but it doesn't do as much for them as it does for the buyers. You would think that there shouldn't really be any difference, but because the cost of doing Matterport comes out of the pocket of the selling agent, you know, uh, you know, it, it, they sometimes are just like, oh, do I need this or do I not need this? But buyers, NAR over and over again has had research uh, uh, that, uh, you know, buyers love Matterport. And a lot of people still are not really familiar with Matterport, certainly not like we are, and therefore they at first don't know how to navigate it. It's pretty logical to me, because uh, it's, it's not that different than Google Street View, but you just kind of click and pan and go. But uh, if, you, uh, if you have a programmed walkthrough like this, it sort of, it not only shows them the house, uh, but it also demonstrates, oh, you can move through from room to room, so forth. And then, and then when the thing ends, or if they click on the screen and it stops and goes into manual mode, people understand. Oh, okay, it's a, it's a, it's kind of like Google Street View. It's it's like Google Street View on steroids. So, it it serves the dual purposes of essentially providing a video tour, as well as teaching the new user of Matterport how you do it. Well, this is an interesting one. This one had a little loft up above. This thing only had clearance of three feet and I had to take the Matterport camera up a ladder to get to it. Uh, the only access was by a ladder. That was a lot of fun. So, nice uh, so cool. How, how do you do that? Going up a ladder? No, not going up the ladder. How do you set the Matterport tour so that it's not on a, a static uh, play oh. tour button? Yeah, well, of course, the, the, the first step of the process is going into the Matterport workshop and programming a highlight tour. Uh, because, you know, if you don't have a highlight tour, you can't have an automated highlight tour. So, uh, so the first thing I, is to create a highlight reel. A highlight reel. Is that what they call it now? Highlight tour? It's, they've changed the name over the years. Um, but a highlight reel so that you have the, the step by step um, positions. Uh, yeah, bring that up. Thanks, Dan. <clears throat> and uh, on this one, I haven't actually labeled the rooms. I'm, I'm, I'm developing the habit of doing that, too, because each one of those little thumbnails at the bottom can say uh, overview, dollhouse, front yard, living room, kitchen, so forth, which is, an, which is a nice ad addition because then someone can scroll back and forth all those thumbnails and just click into a given room if they want. Um, I, I didn't do it on this one. Um, but, but you program a highlight reel, and then when, for, for example, if you're just delivering a raw Matterport done, you add a parameter at the end of the Matterport URL. Uh, you use the 
the ampersand, you know, that thing that kind of squiggles around. And then after that, uh, the lowercase letters, play equals number one. And that, if you have that on the end of your Matterport, once they open the Matterport, it'll automatically start taking you through that uh, reel like that. Anytime someone clicks within it, it pauses. Uh, you hit the play button to start it again. But uh, it, it's pretty simple. Uh, if you're using WP3D models, or which I do, uh, or presumably one of the other services that uh, kind of adds additional features, um, in WP3 uh, models on one of the tabs, um, I forget what it's called, but on one of the tabs, there's a, just a checkbox you hit and that makes it automatically play. So um, there's, two, there's two kinds of tours that you can do with a highlight reel. Which, which one are you selecting for this automatic walking through where it's not a slideshow view? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have, when you program a highlight reel, you have, you have, uh, there, there's radio buttons and you select either slideshow or walkthrough. I always use walkthrough mode. Slideshow mode uh, shows a given view and it pans like from right to left. And then it quickly fades to black and then comes back up in the next position and pans whichever way you selected it to. Uh, walkthrough mode is the mode that you use. And I, when I start doing a highlight reel, I always click walkthrough mode, apply to all. <clears throat> uh, so you don't have to do that, everything, a single thing. And then if I, I do occasionally have uh, <clears throat> situations where I don't want the walkthrough mode to move from one position to the next. Um, uh, for example, I had a model recently where there was just a, there was a strange, uh, there was a strange artifact appearing in a doorway uh, or on a patio or something. And I didn't want to move from one position to the next through that because it looked kind of odd. It was because I had uh, done some of the uh, some of the scans, uh, that it, they were actually cortex simulations of scans um, out in sunlight on the patio. Um, and, and cortex produces all kinds of aberrations. Um, so, I, so I wanted to use slideshow from one position that looked really pretty in the sun to in the patio where it was in shade. And so I, so when you don't, when you've got walkthrough set to your entire tour, and you want on a specific transition not to use walkthrough, but to use slideshow fade to black instead. Uh, the 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 first one of that transition, let's say the A position, you leave on slideshow, and the second one, uh, you where you're going to it, you check the slide. Uh, you leave on a walkthrough. I'm sorry, the first one is on a walkthrough. They're all on walkthrough preset uh, in my case, and then the one. The, the arriving one you set to slideshow. Uh, and I think even in the pop-up box, it says, um, you know, check, for, uh, it, it, it describes it as transition from previous node. Uh, so that you can, you can deselect uh, walkthrough mode if you want for a particular transition. All right, so let me recap a little bit. Uh, if you would like to have your Matterport tour automatically launch begin a walkthrough through the property in Matterport Workshop, check the box that says walkthrough and apply that to the entire highlight reel. In some cases, you may wanna have a slideshow view or you may wanna have a mix of highlight reel and slide of highlight reel done as a walkthrough or a slideshow right. and you have that option. Exactly. If you're doing that uh, uh, with a Matterport link, you're going to use a parameter. That may be a new term to many Matterport service providers. So I encourage you to go to the We Get Around Network forum, wganforum.com. Type in um, uh, parameter in the search box and you'll pull up a lot of articles, including a long list of all the Matterport parameters that you could add to the end of a URL. Uh, and then uh, in your case, you're using WP3 WordPress plugin. Uh, it's just a matter of checking a box that says you'd like the highlight reel uh, selected. Auto, auto start. I think they call it auto start. Auto yeah. start. 
uh, with the walkthrough view. So right. that's awesome. That's a bonus tip. That's not even on your list of 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques, but I thought we'd, we have to at least talk about it because I love that you use that all that feature all the time. Yeah, okay. I, I've all, uh, the only time I deliver uh, Matterports without that is when I'm doing something for construction or BIM work or something like that where you know, they don't care about that. They just, they're, they're just creating modeling. But for anything that's sales, whether it's, whether it's for corporate sales, uh, where they're, uh, we've done a Matterport of a suite uh, that people want to walk through because uh, they're looking for somebody to lease it. Uh, a lot of that going on now. Um, or residential. I always, I always program a tour. Awesome. You, you introduced a new term, BIM. Yeah, and I forget what it stands for. So, so building information management. So thank you. If you're, if you're just collecting uh, digital assets associated with the property, uh, you may not care about the walkthrough. You, you just really want the tour, the photos, the highlight reel, etc. Yeah, and and uh, for example, in the, la in the last week, uh, my my son who also scans uh, with me now, um, and I have done two Best Buy stores. They reached uh, five about fifty thousand square feet. And that's being used just as a survey tool to get measurements uh, because they're going to remodel the stores. Awesome. Whole nother topic, uh, creating as built And we've done shows on that in the, we get around on WGAN TV live at five. Again, come to the forum, WGANforum.com. Search for as built or AEC or BIM in that search box. You'll pull up those topics. Okay. 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. Number one, differentiate okay. your Matterport virtual tours by mastering exterior shooting. I'm just reading what you wrote. So yeah. what does that mean, Kevin? Yeah, let me talk about this. We don't need to spend much time on this, but <clears throat> uh, anybody who's done Matterport for a number of years knows that there are more and more people doing Matterport uh, <clears throat> in any large metropolitan area. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, if you... If you if you, if you Google around, you'll find quite a few people who do Matterport. <clears throat> uh, uh, you've got a two choice. You can do just Matterport and basically compete on price only, uh, which means you're you know, not going to get paid that well. Uh, uh, and that's a whole other <laughs> discussion. We can, we can go two hours on that. Uh, or you can offer uh, capabilities that other people aren't doing. Um, I live in, in Southern California where... Uh, the weather is nice pretty much year round. Um, uh, we wish it rained more. We need it. Um, and uh, the outdoor portions of private properties are in some cases as important as the indoor capabilities. Uh, realtors will off, off, often feature, uh, you know, the backyard, the patio, the pool, the, you know, artificial waterfall, you know, uh, the spa, all this, all this stuff that's outdoors. Matterport's not designed for outdoors. Uh, the company will tell you, uh, you know, it's, you know, it runs on infrared. Infrared is blinded by direct sunlight. That's all we have here in Southern California. Uh, so it's an indoor process, basically. And 95% of the people here just do indoor stuff. Well, let's actually jump into that. It's actually number two, using Matterport Pro 2 3D camera and Rico Theta Z1 together for better dollhouse models. Perhaps you could maybe yes. show and tell us and, and maybe include an example of a, the magic of how you sh shoot a pool and get the dollhouse to look nice. I will. Uh, and so, so I should share my screen now? Yes, please. Okay, so I'll do this and uh, let's see. I'll, ju I'll just, my desktop's got stuff all over it, but I'm just going to open it up here and kind of rearrange things. Okay. Do you want to just share a particular window or the whole desktop? Uh, well, I, uh, yeah, I could just share the, the, uh, this window. Let me just stop share and then go back to share screen. And I got to find Google Chrome new tab. Okay, that should be it. Okay, is that better? Yep. Okay, so I'll do this. And I've got a, got a, got a lot of different uh, properties. Uh, I can do this, but um, let, me, let me go to let me go the Comber. Okay, so one, 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 one. So while Kevin is calling that up, there's a, a list of about 10 of his properties listed in that post that I was sharing that we get around network forum, WGANforum.com. Uh, and you can see some examples. I, I mean, boom, right away, I see the pool 
uh, in your dollhouse. Maybe you can just go back to that dollhouse yeah. view. I will do that. And so this, this is I, a, I, I just want to say here that, that yeah. if, if for, for, for those who just like, just take it for granted that you see a blue swimming pool, uh, that's not the case if you're just using a Matterport Pro 2 camera. So yeah. that's a problem. How do you solve that, Kevin? And I'll show you by comparison, let's see, 1576 Eldorado. So 1576 L. Whoops, Eldorado. <clears throat> so th this is one, uh, this is with or without a uh, pool. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there we go. The, the pool's black. Yeah. Yeah, so this is, this is, so here's, here's the Matterport walkthrough. Uh, you can go around, move, move around the thing, but if I go to the uh, dollhouse view, in this case, we just didn't have, have the time and the light uh, to go back and, and fill in the pool. But, but normal Matterport, one, if, you, if you take Matterport and master doing out of doors, which is the first challenge you need to do, uh, in this case, we did the entire backyard, as you see, uh, <clears throat> this is what you'll get. Uh, the way you the way you do, uh, and and I must say, right about now is when the client, you know, you you, you you're thinking, oh gosh, I've become an expert at shooting outdoors. It's like amazing that I've gotten the entire backyard of this house in a Matterport scan. And the client says, well, what about the pool? You got the the water's black. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, but how, but, how it, did but you it, solve that? it makes uh, if I may, Dan, it I think it. May, uh, taking these in uh, step order, very. F I think that there are very few Matterport creators who do an entire yard, uh, or, or even patios where sunlight's falling and so forth. And in Southern California, this sort of presentation communicates a heck of a lot more about a property than just seeing the house. You have no idea. Now, Matterport does allow for those those sort of bubble exterior 360 views, but the, those are meaningless unless you click on them and then it, it, it enables you to look around. If you click on one of those bubbles, uh, you basically get this and you, can, and you can look around from the position and you'll see bubbles for other 360s floating around and little walking out images where you go into the house and so forth. But you get a heck of a lot more information when, you, when you've actually scanned the entire yard. Uh, traditionally, you, can, you can't do this in direct sunlight. <clears throat> Caveat being that, yes, you kind of can using the Z1 or a BLK, uh, but alignment problems are horrendous. Uh, so let, let's assume experience. that, Kevin, let's assume the Leica BLK 360 is really probably out of the price range of most of our viewers. And myself as well. <laughs> you know, and, and you can you know, rent it, uh, but I, I think there's actually, a, you know, a reasonable practical solution that you use in order to make the water blue in your dollhouse. Maybe we yeah. go back to the, <clears throat> the one that the, the water is blue. The, and talk about how the, you accomplish that. This house, this house is another, I'm sorry, another, another good demonstration. In this case, the patio was covered. Therefore, this large section, this table and chairs and stuff, back to where the house is back here, was in... Uh, heavy shade during the day, even when the sun was out. So we made sure to scan this area in shade while the sun shined so that you could, so that you could see how nice the yard looked in sun. But then we went back at the end of the day uh, as the sun set, as you, as you see, as I, set, as I step out here, now it's just after the sun has set uh, and therefore the infrared contamination from direct sunlight is no longer present. And we could go out and scan the entire yard. Uh, and there was enough, there were enough three-dimensional objects, including some statuary, tree, the, this furniture sitting here that the Manaport camera could sense dimensionally where it was and end up building uh, an accurate model where all the pieces fit together. Yeah, so, so this, is, this is awesome. So let me just summarize your, your tip here, just yeah. in, in a few words, which is, in, in order to shoot outdoors as a Matterport scan, the camera cannot see the sun. So if the sun goes down at sunset, 
or it hasn't yet risen at sunrise, then you can scan. And some people will say, well, if it's cloudy, the clouds, no, e even clouds are a problem. If the camera can see the sun, wherever the sun is, you can't scan. Yeah. You if you have a very, very heavy overcast day, and I grew up in Chicago, those happened. Uh, London certainly has uh, quite a few. Uh, then it, the clouds are thick enough to block the infrared, but it's gotta be heavy clouds. Yeah, so let, let's just assume if the camera can see the sun, <laughs> whether there's clouds or not, you're not gonna have success doing the, the, the scanning and you'd have to put it on a six, 360 view, which Agreed. is different. So, no. so Kevin has mastered shooting Matterport with uh, outdoors and he's just summarized how to do that uh, which is wait for the sun to set or before the sun rises and you can shoot outdoors all day long. Right. Are, we, are we up to the pool? I'm just, I want to talk about that pool, how you get it. Yeah. <clears throat> now in this case, likewise, and if I click down here, you'll see that this, this yard was scanned just after sunset. It does, it does produce kind of a dull look to the, to the walk, walk around. Uh, but you know, that's just something you have to live with because uh, of the infrared limitations. Uh, we try to do it progressively. Like in this case, you can see that the sun was down behind, uh, behind my head, behind the house, but there was, there was still some sun hitting the foliage here. So we try to time it so that we include as many, uh, as much sun, sunlit views as possible. But, you know, there's only, you know, the, the sun sets fast. So you, you, you got to just race around and plan your day right. Um, so what you do to, you, you'll see over here, and I've left, I've left it this way on purpose, um, there's quite a number of scan points around here. You can see those little circles. Um, and of course, of course, you can go back after the model is built and uh, hide some of those scan points so that when one is navigating around the yard, you don't, you know, be, you're not moving six inches all the time. Um, but some of these scan points were Matterport pro camera scan points that we used in order to capture the whole yard, as you see here. And then we went back with the Z1 camera and did, did scan positions approximately, I'll, I'll move my pointer, here, 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 along the edge of the pool and fairly close to the edge. And those, those positions, uh, since the Z1 is only a photographic camera, uh, and then it's um, what it captures as a, as a 360 uh, uh, spherical image is converted uh, to a simulation of uh, surfaces with their colors and textures and so forth. Uh, it sees the water um, and it's not uh, I mean, the Matterport camera, the Matterport Pro camera sees the water too, but because the infrared penetrates the water and feels no surface, uh, the surface of water is invisible to the infrared scanner and Matterport camera. Uh, and because of that, uh, when you build a model uh, with just the Pro camera, uh, it throws away the photographic image of the surface of the water, the, the, okay. the blue color. So you've used a Ricoh Theta Z1 camera do you hide those scans for the walkthrough or nope, you just leave them there? I, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. It, 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 uh, it, it just depends upon. Uh, so, the, so the point is you need the, the Ricoh Theta Z1 scans in order to get the dollhouse view. Maybe you go back to the dollhouse but, in order to get the dollhouse and, view to show the water. The only, there's only, in this, in this whole model, there's only about five or six, or a Z1, uh, Z1 Kevin, scan. are you able Z1. to turn your phone off there? <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm not sure I can. Uh, hang, hang on a second, I'm sorry. It's out of my, it's, it's out of my reach. Okay. All right, so the, the, the magic with the Ricoh Theta Z1 is that you can either, I'm back. Hide, you can either hide the scans or you can leave the scans in so the even if you hide a scan in a walkthrough experience it's still used to build the dollhouse correct so the blue is still there that's the magic now yeah uh, i know you use a ricoh theta z1 but i, I want to say 
any 360 camera that is supported by Matterport yes. can, can achieve this result. So if you're using a Insta360 One X2 or an Insta360 One X or a Ricoh Theta V, uh, any, uh, or, or now even a Insta360 uh, One R, any 360 camera that is supported by Matterport uh, and uh, can achieve this effect of having the water blue in the dollhouse view. Yes, exactly. That, uh, Kevin, that, that's awesome. Now you started yeah. to mention sun. So I, I'm gonna go to uh, 10 advanced outdoor matter scanning techniques. Number three, again, I'm reading what you uh, sent yeah. me in advance. Advance time sun planning using Google Maps and Apple Maps yeah. satellite 2D, 3D views. That's a lot. Tell me about advanced. Okay, so I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what I'm talking about here and I'll just go to uh, Google Maps for Los Angeles and I'll put in the address to just check in 541, uh, right, 541, Commerce Avenue, there we go. It's in Encino, it's right here. And the first time when a client calls me for a job, this is the very first thing I do. I do this before I even tell them what the price is going to be for the job because I want to know how this how this home sits to the sun. Uh, Google Maps defaults to north is up, like like most maps. Uh, and this is the house here. Uh, the pool was out back, uh, so by going to satellite view here, you can see when the agent called me, I went here to look at the house. I could see the pool. I could see that. The front of the house faces east, so I know that I want to be there in the morning to get this side of the house. The back faces west, so I'm, I know I'm going to get afternoon shots over there. I, I can also see that the, uh, of course, the Google in, in most cities, Google has this excellent 3D view, which is really great. Uh, so that you can study the arrangements, you can see where the trees are. The, the, this, this rendering may be up to a year or two old, so the trees could be even bigger uh, than what you see here. But I mean, you really get an awful lot of information when you're planning a shoot by, by going here. And Apple Maps has the 3D too. I usually check both of them. Some, some areas are better covered by Apple Maps. Some are better covered by Google. So Kevin, um, you, you mentioned that the, that the entrance of the house is facing east and you want yes. to shoot beginning in the morning. Why is that? Well, because the sun's going to be illuminating this side of the house in the morning. Uh, the north, north is straight up here. This house happens to be oriented di directly to the, uh, you know, the, to, the, to the compass, north, south, east, west. So north is that, that way up the top of the screen. So I know... Uh, I, I know that the sun is going to be facing from this side. Uh, it's now kind of we're, we're between winter and summer. In, in the winter time, the sun would be coming in from this angle. In the summertime, it would be coming pretty straight on. Now, why like does to, that matter when you're scanning? When you're doing a Matterport scan, why why does that matter? You, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm doing Matterport, this tells by looking at this, and I can even look at the the height the height of the house roughly speaking, by, by tilting this view down and, and so forth, I, I, can, I can calculate that from the roof edge here to the back edge of the pool, that's about, uh, yeah, about uh, depending on how you call it, like a 60 degree angle coming down here. So I know uh, it, using an app called Sun Surveyor, I can, uh, <clears throat> depending upon the time of year, I could calculate that the backyard here is going to be in pretty much uh, total open shade from sunrise, which is now 7 a.m., until about 9 o'clock in the morning at least. So I can go there uh, between 7 and 9 and get a lot of this stand uh, while the sun looks nice and blue. I mean, the sky looks nice and blue, but the sun is not directly shining here. Because the house is oriented this way, I know that the sun will be coming in a bit of an angle so the direct sunlight will first hit this area down here. Uh, so I'll probably get that first. Okay, now I'm, I'm, I'm confused. You got a lot going on there. Let me see if we can break <laughs> it down a little bit. First, you, you mentioned an app called Sun Surveyor. So that's S-U-N-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-R-S-U-
V E Y O R. It's one word. Yeah. Uh, uh, so when, when I know that I would want to shoot inside the house before going outside, that's that solves a lot of a lot of scanning uh, assembly of, of, of the model problem. Right. Scanning indoors working outside. Uh, but that said, if I knew the lights coming from the east, then I would know that the house is going to cover a uh, shadow most of the pool uh, until in the early morning, by, or you know, sometime in the morning. Yeah, so, I'm going to do this area first. Then I'm going to go into the house if I want to get the front. If I want to get the front door, uh, front patio area like this. I don't remember if I did it or not. Uh, but but said, here's where here's where I'm confused because you, yeah. you talked about you wanted you looked at this house you knew that the entrance was facing east that's where the sun's going to rise right uh, it, me oh, I, okay I, I'd want to shoot the other side of the <clears> house <throat> yes my my confusion my confusion I do I do virtually everything I do HDR photography I do videos I do Matterport other kinds of virtual tours and uh, and so I was I was thinking of the HDR. If I'm ah, going to run around all day, your photos first, HDR uh, of the front, I would do first. Uh, th this, this house I actually went to for two days. In the, in the HDR, the regular photos, I do the front first, inside the middle thing, and then this starting early afternoon. For the Matterport, you're absolutely right. I'm, my apology for the confusion. It's my brain working in kind of like auto mode. Well, I know the good news is you've been exceedingly busy, so I'm, I'm so thankful you've taken the time to. to oh yeah, no, it's my like pleasure. Time. So for yeah. for Matterport, I would do this part first, absolutely out here. I would get all of this captured as much as I could first thing in the morning. All right. So you're breaking a rule here. So I want to understand that because yeah. I would normally say complete the inside of the house first. No. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, because I'm going to be trying to my best to capture exterior areas i can't i can control a lot of things but i can't control where the sun goes so i have to shoot i have to shoot exterior areas according to its availability and open shade so but, i have to do this back there first. It, it makes total sense make me nervous but i i think what what, what essentially what's happening if the sun's rising in the east it's it means the house is going to cast a shadow over the, the the backyard for some portion of the morning. And, and I, I don't know if that's you or me or you or some one of our listeners, uh, uh, viewers would probably say, oh, well, if you pull out the such and such app, it'll, it'll help you calculate the angle of the sun with the height of the house so that you would know that it, uh, at 1038 uh, AM, your, your backyard will still be in shade so right. you can be scanning the backyard. Uh, you can time your day. Uh, because there's no sun. The, the camera is not going to see the sun until some point in the morning. And so you better be scanning what the, the back side of the pool working towards the house. Right. As the sun comes up, the, the, the sun is going to hit the back side of the pool first and yeah. eventually come uh, at high noon straight down. So you essentially, you're scanning from the back edge of the pool towards the house, trying to race to beat the sun uh, exactly. coming up. And, and I always like uh, any Matterport, I always start uh, essentially by anchoring the Matterport solidly to the building itself. So like uh, um, this area, this strip here on the back of the house is essentially a portico. This is, this is outdoors. You can see an archway down there. So I did a few scans in this archway so that the, so that the orientation of the Matterport had the physicality of the, of the portico posts and the exterior wall of the house and so forth locked, locked down. And then I ventured out in this area to get around the pool as much as I could. I didn't have enough time to get everything done. I, I, so I came back after after dusk and filled in the rest of the grass and you know certain areas. So at that time, the, the sun now has passed over the pool, it's yep. behind the trees, and then you could continue your scanning. Exactly. You can see there's a lot of trees to the west, uh, not to mention, whoops, going a little bit too far, not, okay. not to mention there's a bit of a hillside here too. Okay, so, and I'm, I'm confused about Sun Surveyor. How are you using that app? What is it that you're doing with that? Sun Surveyor, 
hang on a second. Maybe I can just, uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, I, I need to master how to uh, uh, connect my, uh, my iPhone to the thing, but you may be able to see this anyway. Uh, uh, put it in front uh, of me. How about now, you your green screen? We'll do that. Or hold yeah. it up in front of you. Yeah. Maybe I, can, maybe I can do it this way. You can see my face, that's for sure. Well, I'll tell you what, if you want to show yeah. a lot of it, let, let's, let, let's do this. As, as I'm going to uh, stop sharing. Go ahead, if you, if you, if you can. Put my screen, right? Uh, you, yeah. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Turn that off. I got my green screen here. Yeah, let's do, let's, let's do it like that. That's cool. Yeah, okay. So let me get this open. Now I got to put my code back in. Okay. So this is Sun Surveyor. And as I turn my phone, you can see it orients to GPS live online. And if you see, if you see that ball up near the top of the arc, that yellow arc across the top, that's the sun. And it's showing hour by hour where this, uh -oh. uh, it's showing hour by hour where the sun will be located throughout the day in your position. Uh, so uh, in your ge ge uh, geolocation. Okay, so that works. And, and, so and you can and and you can you can you can hold this thing up on, when you're on site, and it'll you can point it and look at it, and it'll show you exactly where the sun's going to be any time of day. Can you can you load the address be before you go? Yes. Uh, not only not only can you do that. Yes, like if if you're if you were going to fly to Tahiti and do a scan. Well, let's just you, let's you, just you, talk about this house in Los Angeles that you scanned. Yeah. You you could put in the address of that property and then literally know where the sun is going to be in yeah. order to help you think about that pool. Well, considering keeping keeping in mind, Dan, the the sun is ninety three million miles away. So uh, you know whether whether I'm in downtown Los Angeles or or out at this house in Encino there's going to be really no difference with the sun position. Uh, but, but, uh, but for example, if you're planning a shoot, if you were booked to do a shoot three months from now, you can dial the date ahead three months and see where the sun's going to be three months from now, which is going to be on different trajectories. Okay. So that, that's awesome. So I want to say there's really kind of, uh, I think there's maybe two reasons that you care about the sun. The, the first is if you want to shoot outdoors, and then the second is, uh, <laughs> I would say, I, you, I'm sure you, you do this probably intuitively and you don't even think about it anymore. Probably not, yeah. You, if the sun is pouring in through the window, then when the camera comes into that sun that's pouring yeah. into that room, <laughs> the, but, what's going to no, happen? Absolutely, even for the interior shooting on Matterport, uh, particularly when doing large office buildings and things like that that have entire walls of glass. Uh, and you, you don't really need sun surveyor for that, but you do need to go to Google Maps and see which way the building sits, north, south, east, west, to know, you know whether the face is north, in which case the sun will never be pouring in uh, directly, or if it's east for the morning, west for the afternoon, and south all day. So, so let me see if I can sum up what you're describing uh, to say, if this, if, if you if you know where the sun is going to rise and set, it's going to pass over the building. Then you want to scan in the opposite side of where the sun is. Yes. That way, you don't have sunlight pouring into the room where the camera is going to see the sun, and essentially you're going to get a black hole in the floor in the room. Right. Exa exactly. And and in planning any shoot, even if the shoot is even if the shoot is just for interiors, if it's a condo, there is no exterior space uh, or it's apartment on a tall building. You still, you, you go to Google Maps, find out whether that, pl whether that place is, you know, exposed north, south, east, west, so that you can plan your day properly. Y yes, if, you, if you're shooting a small, if you're shooting a very small place and you're just booked for 10 a.m., great. You just go there at 10 a.m. and do the best you can. Uh, but it, I do a lot of large properties and there you, you know you're gonna be there for hours and hours. So you, you wanna plan which hours are spent where. Yes, and, 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 and I wanna amplify what you're saying because had I known your tips when I started out, July 2000, 
2014 scanning. I can tell you, real estate agent says, I, you know, I need you to, you know, she texts me a note, penthouse, here's the address. And she, she doesn't mention that the, the, the most important feature of this penthouse is the couple thousand square feet terrace. The rooftop deck, yeah. <laughs> the rooftop deck o- yeah. overlooking Piedmont Park in Atlanta. That's the selling point. Of it. Uh, so I got to shoot that. Um, but had I looked at Google Maps in, and realized that this terrace was associated with that property, then uh, perhaps I could have rearranged my day so that I didn't sit on site for four hours waiting for the, the sun uh, to be behind the building so that I could right. actually scan the deck. So exactly. that's how important what, what you're describing is, is if you can go to Google Maps and look ahead at the property so that if you do have a situation where there is a pool or a lot of land or whatever it is you're going to do, you can figure out whether you want to scan that in the morning or the afternoon. And in my case, I literally would have saved myself four hours of just sitting there waiting for the sun to, to, to move uh, in order to do that outdoor deck. Right. And the bottom line is, if we're hired to do a job, you want to go out there and deliver the absolute best 3D walkthrough experience possible. And so if there's, if there's significant attractive features about a property that are exposed to sun, inner, inner courtyard sometimes, you know, a house that wraps around an open courtyard to the, to the sky, you, you, you got to plan these things so that you can make everything look the best possible. Awesome, which I think actually goes back to your first tip, which was differentiate your Matterport virtual tours by Absolutely. mastering exterior shots. Because if you can get that beautiful courtyard or that, that outdoor patio, and that's the money shot of why somebody would actually buy the property, you've got to figure out how to do this because it's, it's what's going to differentiate you from a hundred other competitors that have no idea how to shoot outdoors because they haven't watched Kevin on WGA and TV. Yeah. Last week, one of my one of my uh, longest clients. Uh, last week, uh, selling a house here, uh, where I would, had done this with the exterior pool and so forth, called me and said that one of the one of the buyers that was placing an offer on the property uh, had specifically mentioned that they loved the Matterport marketing for the property because they found that they could walk not only through the house, but out around the patio and pool in the walkthrough mode and that they had never seen that before and that they were really thrilled about it. Now, for the, the, the agent was kind enough to call me up and say that this had actually happened. I wasn't there, of course, but uh, a lot of agents might not bother to pass along a compliment, but, uh, but it, was, it was nice to hear. And that's, of course, reinforcing uh, to, to, to our clients uh, that we're offering something beyond others. Yes. Uh, so I'm going to move on. 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. Number five, using drone for lot mapping and improved site plans, floor plans. What does that mean? Okay. Now I probably, uh, a couple things. The, 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 I'm going to, I'm going to address first the, uh, the, uh, let me, th- I'm trying to remember. Uh, Using drone for lot, five, five, two, four, five. site plans, floor plan. Yeah, I think this is one of the properties that uh, this applies to. Um, this is a property I did recently. Here's, here's another indoor outdoor with, with pool and water. Uh, let me go back and refresh my own memory. Uh, okay, yeah, so here, here again, you see this, this, um, this Matterport model, you can see it did the same technique with the pool. And in this case, um, the house occupies, you know, a large proportion, about like half, half of the entire lot. We did everything except this side of, of the property where, you know, the garbage cans were stored and stuff like that. Um, and I also... Among, let's see, if I can go up here, I can probably, hmm, let's see, I'm not sure the order. There's a lot of, a lot of photos here. I did, um, I did, um, one of the things I did with the drone was I flew up to about 200 feet, aimed the camera 
straight down and shot the entire property as an aerial image. Uh, that may that may be in here someplace, but I don't want to bore you going through all of it. But I have a I have a straight down shot on this property, you know, kind of wider than this and straight over the middle of the property, looking straight down. I took I took the Matterport tour once it was built, um, and also that straight down shot, and I sent them to. Um, the service uh, called W, uh, what is it, uh, MP to FP, Matterport to floor plan, MP to FP. A MP number to two, FP.com. Okay. Right, exactly. And this is what they produced for me, which is, uh, if, you know, if, if you look at the Matterport model, you'll, you'll see it's very similar. Here's the, here's the front. We scanned out to the uh, uh, the front fence, the little security gate right there, front fence, and there's a driveway gate as well, uh, and and the pool, you know, and, and this entire area. Uh, so th I think this... what I'm hearing here is by doing the aerial, you were able to get not only a professionally done in color floor plan with your logo, you also got a site plan for. Yes this particular property. And I think what I heard you say is you helped facilitate that by taking a drone shot from 200 feet directly yes. down. So you provided the Matterport tour and that drone shot to mp2fp.com. And then they were able to create this uh, floor plan site plan for you. Precisely. Uh, and and th this being uh, a very, very attractive layout as opposed to just a, a flat sort of uh, floor plan. Uh, yeah, well, it's, you know, so it, it, it's, uh, it's in color. It's your logo. It's not somebody else's logo. And it's right. got the property address on it the way you want it to be done. Yeah. So I, 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 I find I have now, traditionally, I've done Matterport, and then I've clicked the button and paid an extra 19 bucks, and they come back with the black and white floor plans. I have switched to doing this because it is so much nicer. Uh, I do this, so, sometimes I scan only the house. Maybe I don't do the pool and the yard and everything, but I still fly the drone up and get a shot straight down on the property. And from that and the Matterport model, they can put this same thing together. Now I notice, uh, Kevin, you have the real estate agents info on your floor plan. So do, do you yep. request uh, a branded and unbranded version? So you have one for NLS. actually what I've done, and, and this is a this is a fairly new thing uh, that I'm doing use, using this service, which I'm thrilled with. They do a fabulous job. Um, I have them. Their traditional way of working is that they'll create this whole thing and send it to you as a JPEG or PDF, something like that. I made the request. I, I, I made the request. I know that you're building this as layers in Photoshop. So I want you to deliver to me a JPEG, a finished JPEG, and also the Photoshop file with all the layers. So I can go in and if, if, if there's a typo or something, uh, or if I, uh, or if there's an error in the phone number, or, or, or if I want to change uh, something from uh, media room to bonus room, or something like that. Uh, I, if I have the layered Photoshop, I can easily edit anything I need to, and then just output a new uh, JPEG or PDF, and it's done. So you and, so, and they were happy to do that for me. And they, they gave you a .psd P, uh, file. Yeah, uh, so I get both a JPEG and a .psd, and, and that's been fabulous aside from their work in general and and the cost for this is about 10 bucks more than the matter matterport model yeah it's crazy i i uh we get around we we use mp2fp.com and uh it's a phenomenal service uh, we're very happy with it they're uh, uh they are a member wgan uh third party service provider you can find them in the wgan marketplace on, at the forum, wganforum.com or mp2fp.com. Uh, so that's awesome. That, that's an example I'm, of- I might, I might add that the, the, this particular format here, this, 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 this was not 
this was not a design style that they had on their website. I actually took, uh, I, have, I have some agents that hire traditional site plan companies to, to measure sites and produce plans like this. And like uh, I did a job in Hidden Hills, very upscale neighborhood uh, about a year ago, uh, the agent hired an outside company to do a complete site plan, which looked in the same style, paid $800 for a complete site plan that looked like this. Uh, and they measured the house as well. Uh, and I, you know, I, I basically used the, the <clears throat> I, I looked at some of these kind of drawings and I sent uh, this kind of, this style of drawing to uh, MP, to, MP to FP uh, and asked them, can you do something in this style? And they came back like two, three days later, how's this? And I was shocked and amazed and thrilled. That yeah, they, 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 were, they, they emulated the style even that I wanted. Yeah, they provide awesome stuff. And, and you know, gee, that's a whole nother conversation in terms of, you know, pricing and, and, and value. But, yeah. you know, we, we think just because we can get it done, what we think is relatively inexpensively uh, from a third party company right. like mp2fp.com, uh, there are agents and brokers that are paying $500, $800 for something that, uh, that, that we're thinking, oh, we'll deliver that, you know, for $99, 149, 249, you know, whatever uh, the price point is in, in, in our market. Exactly. Uh, and the agent is, is like, they, they're not going to tell you they're already paying two or three times what you're charging. So uh, uh, I thought somebody might like to see this wine rack. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, uh, Kevin, uh, and advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. Number six, plan your interiors for exterior scanning. What does that mean? Uh <clears throat> what it means is when, you, when you've studied the layout of a home and you know that you've got like a pool and patio on the west side and, a, and, a, and an interior courtyard and so forth, <clears throat> when you venture inside, whether you start inside or whether you grab some outsides and then you start doing the inside of the house, uh, you need to plan your day so that when if that inner courtyard is going to look best at 1 p.m. because of the sunlight fall and so forth, you know that when 1 p.m. comes, you need to have parts of the inside of the house done so that, so that you, you, you can jump directly to that inside part. Uh, you you, if, you, if, you need to get, if you need to get outside the front door at a, at a certain hour because of light patterns, since Matterport requires that every new scan must be adjacent to a previous scan someplace in the, in the pattern, <clears throat> you've got to have all those, that, those patterns and those pathways laid out so that when the right moment comes along to do the exterior part, you can jump to it. Uh, so that's that's how, all I meant by that. Yeah, so Kevin, indulge me for a moment because I'm, I'm, I'm going to amplify what you just described because I, I, sometimes I am as, as obsessed at getting a model to, to look awesome uh, as, as you are. Uh, I'm in New York, two-story penthouse, got three outdoor patios. The, yes. win the windows are from floor to ceiling of two levels. It's a $3,000 a night penthouse in, in, in New York. Uh, lovely place to split, stay near Central Park South. And um, it was obvious to me that I had to have amazing outdoor views from that floor to ceiling yeah. window. And, the, and I looked at the space and I said, the only way I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna shoot this space twice. And so what I mean by that is I went and scanned the entire space uh, and then I had lunch I think I worked for about three or four hours. And then when magic lighting rolled around, right. I raced around. I had about 45 minutes to move the camera anywhere I wanted because now I had my, my mesh of where the, where the right. 
where the camera could now be moved anywhere as you were describing, because you got to do continuous scanning, except if you've already done the entire <laughs> place, now you can put the camera right. down any place. So I literally had 45 minutes to run through the space with the lighting just being perfect outside the windows. And then I hid all the scans that I shot earlier in the day. Now, right. not every client you can do that for. You need a client that's willing to pay for you to be there all day. And I yep. was lucky enough to be able to not only have the, the unit for the whole day, but to actually sleep in it for that one night uh, before I had to give it up to shoot the rest of the hotel. Um, but that's that's an example of what you, I think you just described uh, yes. on, ster on steroids. And, and yeah. similarly on the outdoor terrace, that the view at night was as, as majestic as during the day. So I scanned the, the terrace and, you know, got the magic hour and then I take another step forward and you can see what, what the New York City uh, towards Central Park looks like at, at, at night. Uh, yeah, and, and I, I'm, I'm glad you mentioned balconies because that's one of the things, uh, if, you, if, you, if you're doing a house, you, 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 you might potentially do a house that has balconies on north, south, east, and west side. And so you have to, you know, the, as the sun moves around, uh, north balcony, maybe you can do any time of day. East is going to have to be done in the afternoon. West is going to have to be done in the morning. South is going to have to be done when a tree passes a shadow over it, you know, I mean, anything. And you have to have the mesh up to those balcony entrances all done in order to get access to them at the right hour of the day. And, and so part of how you can do that is I, I know on an iPhone, there's a compass app. Uh, first thing yep. I do when I show up at a property is I'm looking at the compass and I'm, I'm anticipating those, at, at, we've just walked through the house and uh, you know, with the agent, we've done the walkthrough, uh, we, we understand what we're scanning, not scanning, what doors are open, not open and go, mm -hmm. oh, look at that. There's that room and that room and there's that balcony. Oh my gosh, this is two stories and it's got three outdoor patios okay, what time of the day will I be able to successfully scan to get those outdoor patios? Because yeah. they're not an afterthought. It's, it's, it's really the most important shot that we might get is someone being able to visualize being out on the terrace at sunrise, right. at sunset, uh, having this extraordinary view from where they're either living or, or staying. Yeah, I, uh, should, I, sh I should add that the, the, the Sun Surveyor app has, has a mode in which you can turn on the camera of your iPhone and hold it up and look at the image on the iPhone, which the camera of the iPhone is creating and it superimposes where the sun will be at different times of day. So that you could literally stand on a balcony, look towards uh, a, a big tree that you know sometime during the day that tree is gonna pass a shadow over that balcony and you, it'll tell you, the, the, the sun image will tell you it's 2.30 in the that, afternoon. That's crazy. Sun Surveyor, yeah. S-U-N-S-U-R-V-E-Y-O-R, -S -S -E one word, Sun Surveyor. Uh, 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. I think we may have touched on this. Number seven, capture exterior areas partially in sunshine, shade, and twilight. Yeah, by that, by that I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. I, I mentioned that a little bit in that one house where where I I got as much as I could under the open shade of the patio, so that so that those areas I could scan with the pro camera, but I could see out to where the pool was in sunlight. Rather than doing everything outdoors after dusk, which makes it look kind of dull, as much as I can, as the shadows move during the day, I'll jump out there and get as much view of sunlight as I can from the shaded areas. Um, so, so that's a really cool technique that meant on that the house that you showed us towards the top of the show, mm -hmm. when you were outdoors, you were underneath the patio, uh, it was in full sun, you got the benefit of the, the beautiful light in Los Angeles, uh, from a practical standpoint, then it's sunset, you went outside the house in, in order one. to get the, the backyard. Yeah, this, this one here, I yeah. came, out, came out this door, this area was in shade. So I came as far as I could. Yeah. To get to get the because the, the pool, let's face it the pool looks much more attractive and enticing when it's in full sun. Yep. And then later, I, I got you know the rest of the yard when the sun sun went more down. As you can see this is in open shade now. 
a little, little more dull, but it still serves the purpose. So that's kind of mixing up of when you shoot sunshine, shade, and twilight. And yeah. even though it would have been maybe way easier for you just to shoot the whole outdoor backyard in twilight, you did go to the effort of shooting in sunshine as much as you possibly could because right. you were lucky enough to have this overhang that was uh, preventing the sun from seeing the camera. Right. Okay. So that's so, setting the house in advance makes, makes for a better model. Great. 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. Issues, number eight, issues. Switching cameras, Matterport Pro 2, Rico oh boy. Beta Z1, Rico BLK360, <clears throat> and then there's maybe a little cheat sheet note, match scan position to last. What, what's that all yeah. about? Okay, so when you're doing something where you're scanning with a pro camera as much as you can, in this, in this case, like a whole yard and so forth, and then you want to fill in the water of the pool using Z1 or an uh, Insta360, uh, X or, or R, uh, any, any of the Matterport accessible uh, 360 cameras that have no depth sensor. Um, I've only, I, I've actually never tried using my Insta for this because the Z1 has a little bit higher resolution, but maybe I'll try it. The Z1 anyway, which I've had a lot of experience and a BLK I've used a number of times on industrial jobs, switching from the pro camera to something like the Z1 uh, can be uh, uh, a, a tough experience. Uh, trying to get the first, your first Z1, uh, it's not a scan, but your first Z1 360 image to convert, to, uh, convert through Cortex and become a, a simulated uh, 3D scan. Um, you know, time after time, it'll put the, put the Z1 scan in the wrong place. You'll scan by the edge of the swimming pool and it'll put it in the laundry room. So how do you solve that problem? The solution or the closest thing you have, the way, the way to uh, reduce your pain is just before doing the Z1, even, even if the last thing you were doing in the house was the laundry room, bring the pro camera back out right to the edge of the pool, decide some central position at the edge of the pool where you want to uh, have the, try to make the Z1 stick and do one more pro scan there. So that the, the very last scan that has been done with a pro camera prior to hooking up uh, and using the Z1, you put the Z1 camera right on the same spot where the pro camera was. Uh, I believe, I don't know this from a uh, technical uh, proof, you know, Matterport doesn't talk about these things, but I believe that when you, each time you do a new scan or a new Z1 or a new BLK, the, the software, when, when, the, when the data has been uploaded into the iPad, the software first tries to see if it matches to the last previous scan that was done. If it doesn't match well, then it goes back to the next one and the next one and the next one. Uh, you it sometimes if you if you work all the way around the house and then you remember oh I didn't I didn't do that one uh, bathroom on the on the third bedroom. If you go back there and and you pick up the thing you'll find that the alignment process is slower because I I think what's happening is it's having to dig through all of the scans you've done that day to find the one that where it matches. In the case of Z1 going. Uh, a first Z1 scan after a bunch of pro, pro scans, uh, it works much, much better if you do one last scan right where you want to put the Z1 and then put the Z1 right on top of that same thing. I even try to make the height the same. So let me see if I, if I have this. Let's say you've, sh you've shot the whole house with the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera. You're ready to start shooting with the Rico Theta Z1 in order to get the blue, uh, pool. Pool water, water in the pool. Water, to get the water in the pool to look blue as one would expect in the dollhouse. Before you do that Rico Theta Z1 shot, take the Pro 2 camera back out and do one last scan with the Pro 2 before you switch to the Rico Theta Z1. 
and put even, those... even if you've already scanned all along the pool with the Pro 2. Awesome. Go back and do one more. One more. And then when you put the Rico Theta, place the, 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 the monopod, place it exactly where the tripod was for the Matterport Pro 2 3D camera. Correct. And <clears> then <throat> you still may have some problems. You still may have some problems. And if it's not, if it's not right, delete it. If you, what my, my working practice is, if, if, the, if the Z1 scan ends up within 12 inches of where it should be, I keep it because I can rarely get it closer than 12 inches. And, and I think you were gonna you were gonna offer one more tip there, which, which was uh, I think I heard you say lower the monopod closer to the ground. Well, I I, I try to put it so that the so that the lenses of the Z1 are at the same height as as the lenses on the Pro 2 camera. Perfect. But I would also suggest if if you still are having problems to try two other techniques. One mm -hmm. is to lower the tripod of the, of the monopod with the Ricoh Theta Z1 closer to the ground. And then second, if that's not working, look where your scans are, where you have a Matterport Pro 2 3D scan point. Let's Or, or your end, oh. so I hope yep, you're 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 back. Okay, might have been my my end of my yeah end. yeah you you froze for about I ten froze. seconds. Yeah, we're frozen. Yeah. So, um, did you hear that last piece? Which, which I, I didn't hear the last fifteen seconds. Okay. So, uh, 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 two other tips: if you try to do a Rico Theta Z one photo sphere yep. and you can't get it to successfully convert to a scan. <laughs> Then try lowering the tripod so that the shot on the on the Ricoh Theta Z1 monopod is lower to the ground. Second, mm -hmm. if that doesn't work, try finding your previous Matterport Pro 2 3D scan and the one just before that, and then locate the monopod between those two shots. Right. Yeah. Uh, I I know that you know one of the times that I've had challenges, and this was not using a Ricoh Theta, but it was a difference of a light change because I wanted to go from scanning. Oh yeah scanning indoors to scanning outdoors. I, right. uh, you know, I, I, I don't know if you do this, but I, uh, whenever I have a chance, you know, if I have extra time and I'm done, what else can I learn with this property? And so when right. I, I was shooting a, a uh, doing a Matterport tour of the student center at a college university in Atlanta, and uh, they had windows that went probably five stories high. It was really beautiful. Yeah. And uh, they had a nice lake. And one of the things I wanted to do was to say, okay, how can I do night shooting? I brought lights with me and I was mm -hmm. going to set up lights behind pillars. That's a story yeah. for a whole other day. But I wanted to go from daylight to nighttime right. and it was a problem. And so I had to go back maybe 15 scans in daylight before mm -hmm. I could finally, it took me about maybe 20, 30, 20 25 minutes before I could right. get the scans to connect. So yeah. I think if you follow Kevin's technique of, of make your last scan a Matterport Pro 2 3D scan, then put your Ricoh Theta Z1 monopod exactly in the same place with the lens height at the exact, the Ricoh Theta Z1 lens height exactly at the Matterport Pro 2 lens yeah. height, fingers and toes crossed, you'll actually get it to yeah. connect. And yeah, then, I've, yeah. Yeah, I've, I've, I've found, uh, I've used the same technique, uh, s switching between the pro camera and the BLK as well. So, uh, and, and, and so that kind of brings us to our, our next 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. Number nine duplicate and remove Rico Theta Z1 scans to get floor plan made by Matterport. So oh, yeah. What, if, that if, out? yeah, well, if, if you want uh, to order floor plans from Matterport, they will not generate a floor plan if your model has any Z1 uh, simulated scans in it. Uh, so, so when you're done, 
<clears throat> and I stopped doing this because I'm now using the MP to F, uh, M F MP or, yeah. to FP dot com. Right. Yeah. yeah, exactly. For my floor plans, because I like them better. But if you want to use a Matterport floor plan, duplicate the model on the on the uh, iPad. On the on the duplicate side, delete all of the uh, Z1 scans and any scans that were not done on the pro cameras or be okay. Uh, something that has a depth sensor, uh, and then you have to reprocess that model um, and generate your floor plans from that. Okay, so simple enough. But I think that what's really important with what you described is is you know someone watching our show today says, "Oh, wow, that's how you got the pool to be in the dollhouse. That's cool." I've added my Rico Theta Z1 in order to do that. Now I've submitted the, the Matterport model to Matterport to get floor plans. And I can't understand why I can't they order say, one yeah. because, because Matterport will not accept, at least today, Thursday, April 8th, 2021, Matterport will not process floor plans from a model that includes a Rico Theta Z1 right. shot. So the, or any 360. Yeah. Uh, if, if you have if you have one Insta 360 or Z1 scan someplace in your model, even though you have 500 scan points, they won't process a floor plan. So the tip here is duplicate the model, delete the the scan points that were created with the Rico Theta Z1 or the Insta 361 X2 or what, whatever. Now you can submit it to Matterport sure. or uh, take uh, one of Kevin's bonus tips is just submit the model to mp2fp.com and get color floor plans with your logo on it and ask them for a PSD file in addition to the exactly. other formats. Okay, so we, we get to, um, to uh, 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques number 10. I think we've actually covered this was MP2FP better yes. solution. And you had three bullet points here. Use drone straight down to capture the home and yes. site layout use county assessors map files for layout and measurements, and then mm -hmm. send that to MP2FP, Matterport Digital Twin Model, Drone Photo Down, Google Capture, Assessors, Plat Map. That's a mouthful, Kevin. Why are you going through all that effort? What, what, do, what do you get by doing that? Well, it's just, it just increasing the accuracy and, and helping. I, I did a, prop, a property. Uh, here, I'll show my screen. Uh, so click here, Google Chrome. Do you see my screen? Yep. Okay, great. Uh, let me change the thing here. This is uh, 6451 Chesbro. <clears throat> okay, so here's another, here's another home uh, out in uh, Agoura Hills. And you, you can see I've got another one of these kind of plots. This is, that's the general house plan. In this case, I didn't, do, well, yes, I did do. Here, here we go. This is the entire piece of property. See, the house is down here. Uh, house and pool, you see that, uh, and I'll enlarge this. So this is showing that area, the house, the house and the pool. So this is, the, so this is a house plan, first floor, second floor, and this is a site plan. The, the property is actually about two acres, and there's a creek that runs through it. This is, this is LA, so a creek runs through it for about two weeks of the year, uh, and, the, and there's a big piece of property on the back here. And um, so I wanted, you know, I wanted to provide both of these, both a floor plan as well as a site plan of a larger property. Uh, I, I might add that the, the, the tour itself, um, the, this, this was a, a hybrid tour utilizing 3D Vista. And you can see here the, uh, the property house down here, the pool, the pool is down there. Uh, and the way, the way that, picture was oriented uh, with, is this way with house and, and this big back property here. And I created this virtual tour so that people could, you know, pe people could, uh, you know, ro roam around different parts of the property and see the big, big area in back. They could walk, walk across the rope bridge over so, the creek. So let me pause you there because I'm going to yeah. call this a tease for the WGAN TV Live at Five show that you did with us previously called Introduction to 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro with Kevin Dole of home3d.us. So if you go into the We Get Around Network forum, 
and you type in, put in transcript 3D Vista, uh, uh, you'll, you'll pop up that show from, from Kevin and he goes into uh, an entire show showing how he mashes up Matterport and 3D Vista to create these um, amazing experiences. M maybe if you just show us one more time the opening of, of the space. I, yeah, I will. This, this is the Matterport. So we did, we did the, the last part of the driveway, the paved part of the driveway, a little, little front yard, and, and the pool and patio out here. We did as a, as a Matterport model. Uh, close it, closing that back and just going back to, to relaunch this. <clears throat> This, this, is the, this is the initial WP3D models presentation, which includes the still photos, floor plans, agent branding, of course, and the, 3D, and the, and the, the tour. This is the 3D Vista launch. Gives you, gives you a, a fly-in from the little planet effect. All right, so, so let's pause there. So I, again, Kevin did an entire WGA and TV Live at Five show. I, there's so much magic going on here where Kevin is, is mashed up the WP3D models, uh, setting the hero image using 3D Vista, letting you transition either into Matterport or 360s. Very cool show. Highly encourage you to do that. That that's like a whole a whole show in itself. I did want to ask you though, Kevin, on um, uh, this the assessor map files. Okay, where do I get the county assessor map file? Yeah, I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you. I, I can go back to my screen. Uh, okay. Grab that one more time. Here we go. <clears throat> like, uh, so I'm, I'm in Los Angeles County, so I, I go to the LA County uh, assessor map. It pops up there because I've been there so many times. Uh, I don't, I don't know whether this is the same all around uh, the country or not. It's probably similar though. Uh, so here's the LA County Office of the Assessor. I go by address, and then I type in six four five one. Ches. Chesbro Road, find address. Locating address, it says. Locating, locating, locating. I think I've typed enough for the search. Okay, yes, we did it here. So, and it, and it brings up this map. And as you can see, that same uh, parallelogram shape. The house is over here. So once uh, you pull that up, are you sending that to mp2fp.com? In, in, in this case, in this case, I did, and there's, a, I think there's a couple views here. Hang on a second. Um, I, I always forget this a little bit. While you're setting that up, I'll, I'll mention to our viewers: if you if you really love floor plans and site plans, and you see Kevin goes to, you know, has this amazing workflow that he's doing. I'll also suggest that you check out, uh, go to wgan.info forward slash captured, C-A-P-T-U-R-3-D, set up a free Hi. account, and you'll get five free floor plans and site plans from Captured. Yet another platform uh, for getting floor plans and site plans from Matterport uh, tours. Okay, back to you, Kevin. You're showing so you, us. You need, obviously, uh, going through the assessor files, you need to accustom yourself to things. But this little parallelogram in here, my cursor's tracing, is that piece of property. And you can see that it even has dimensions like this side of the parallelogram is 490.05 feet, et cetera, et cetera. It's got dimensions across here. Uh, and so it gives you a lot of information. And uh, there's, a, there's a way to. Uh, OK, way but if you. Oh, if you oh yeah, here's, here's, here's the enlargement. So I, I, can, okay. I, can, I can go in on this. And so the point is, if you get the plat, which has measurements, then you can give that to mp2fp.com. Yeah as part of your request for floor plans and site plans, and they have exactly what the measurements are. Yeah, in this case, I, in this case, because it's a large piece of property, I took the drone way up to the limit of 400 feet. Uh, even at that, I had to take a couple shots uh, because I couldn't get it all straight down from 400 feet, but I could get it in two images. I took those images, uh, you know, put them together in Photoshop, and I sent uh, MP to uh, FP, uh, this plat map with the measurements, that straight down uh, drone shot, and the Matterport model. 
and they put together uh, what what you saw then. Oh, get rid of these couple things, and uh, they they put together this down here. You know, ba based on uh, the plot maps. And they, in this case, I I, I didn't go to uh, the bottom of putting in measurements, but the measurements of the actual plot were helpful to them because of course the Matterport model itself has its own inherent measurements so they could scale the house accurately to the, the entire property. That, that's awesome, awesome. All right, so uh, I promised at the top of the show uh, Matterport tips and tricks in addition to advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. So uh, again, I'm going to the We Get Around Network Forum, WGAN Forum, to post about today's show and uh, I'm gonna read your tip and then maybe you can embellish for us. Yeah. Kevin, well, those bonus tips and tricks. Number one, orientation of a Matterport Pro 2 3D camera before the first scan. What's that about? Uh, or, or, I'm sorry, uh, orient, uh, read that one more time. Sorry, Dan. Sure. Uh, uh, tip number one, orientation of a Matterport Pro 2D 3, uh, Pro 2 3D camera before you do. Oh, your yes, 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 of course. <clears throat> um, when I walk in, well, let's use this one uh, uh, for, for uh, let's see. Well, th this, really this really pertains mostly to the issue of, uh, I'll go into the, uh, the house itself here. <clears throat> uh, it, it, go, it, it goes down to the issue of the fact that an iPad, an iPad, I always hold it sideways, like a computer screen, so that it's wider than it is tall. Uh, uh, you know, there's portrait mode and there's landscape mode. I always use my iPad in landscape mode. Um, and I like when I'm shooting, let me get in here. Like here, you can see the house, the house and the property that I was doing is a bit wider than it is tall. Uh, and I, I like it. And this is just a, it's kind of a, you want to show, you want to share your screen so we can see what you're looking at. Oh yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Never mind. Sorry. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <clears throat> so going back to the dollhouse here. Um, I like it. Uh, the, the, I know that the area I'm scanning here is particularly the house itself is wider than it is tall. And I want to fit that comfortably onto the iPad screen as I scan the whole house for the day. Um, so in this case, I know as I come in the front door, because all else being equal, so oftentimes I'll start in the foyer, in the, in the front entrance of the house. And I want this model as it's scanned to be oriented on the iPad screen uh, in, in, in this orientation uh, with, with the front door, I, I want it to be oriented this way as opposed to this way or, or whatever, you know, like, like in, uh, um, uh, so, so. So which way does the camera that, face? Yeah, yeah. Backing up, anybody who does Matterport knows that once you've done the first scan, that locks into uh, position uh, the, the orientation of the entire mini map that you may build for hours as you move around the house. You can you cannot turn that mini map around; it's locked on the screen. I like that to be locked on the screen so that <coughs> front doors behind me, uh, house is ahead, and I've got if it's a long wide house like this, you know, to the right is on, on the right hand side of the screen and to the left is on the left hand side of that mini map screen. So what you do is when you walk into the house and I put the camera in this position, I, 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 I face the camera this way, face the camera to 90 degrees to the right of the way I'm looking. So the lens, so uh, if you're facing forward, which would be the long way of the house, right. you turn the camera so that the lenses face right. Correct. And by doing that, and by doing that, what happens? In, in, order, in order to get the mini map to be oriented roughly like I'm showing this model. Yes. Uh, 
the 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 lens of the Matterport camera must be faced in this direction over here to the right. When you push the button to do that very first scan, uh, I don't know why they you know designed it that way, but that's just the way they designed it. Uh, if if the camera starts the very first scan aimed 90 degrees to the right, then your model will end up in this. Your mini map uh, construction model will end up in this orientation. If does it matter the that, that the camera stay in that same position doing the rest of the house? No, uh, any it only matters for the first scan. After that, everything just slaves off of that. Okay, so uh, what, one of our members, Harlan Hambright, also a very advanced uh, scanner, many years doing Matterport, hundreds of Matterport tours. He would also say, whatever way you orient that, that camera, continue to do that. Now, I'm not sure exactly why, but I think it's related to making the model process faster, verticals may be straighter. I may be passing some bad information here, but Kevin swears, uh, excuse me, Harlan Hambright swears, make sure that whatever position the camera is in, so if the, if the camera handle is always facing north, always on every scan, keep it facing north. Yeah, I, there's, there's, some, very, there's I, some logic to think that the point cloud might find alignments uh, easier that way. I don't know whether it's true or not. I've never sensed that that was the case, but, but I, I, I could be wrong. Kevin, I'm going to challenge you on one of your future scans. Think about keeping the camera facing always the same direction, yep. all floors, and maybe you'll report back if, uh, if you notice anything different in terms of either how long it took to process or anything about anything Absolutely. different. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Uh, going back to uh, Kevin Dole's uh, bonus tips and tricks. Number two, mark mirrors and windows as you enter a room. Why is that, Kevin? Absolutely. Uh, and, and I've never read this in the Matterport data, but um, for example, I was out doing a large scan uh, with my son, Eric, uh, just last week. And uh, we had a job to do video and HDR photography and Matterport. In those cases, Eric does the Matterport, just calls me if he runs into a problem and he's gotten so good that that's pretty rare. Uh, while I do the HDR and the video, uh, you know, uh, you know, captured all the shots I need and so forth. And <clears throat> he got stuck in one, in one bathroom. It was a small little bathroom. He could not get a scan to a line at all. He, came, he stepped through the doorway. He got the first scan to work. And then he tried to move it just like two, three feet further into the bathroom. Could not get an alignment. Why not? I, uh, and I, w I went in there and I looked around and, and I saw that there was a big mirror all the way down one side of, you know, one of, it's not just like a mirror hanging over the sink, but the whole wall behind the sink was, uh, was a big mirror. And it was a relatively small room. So uh, I just said, take, take the iPad, mark that mirror position before you, do the, before you do the scan. He marked the mirror, boom, scan took. So the, Mat so the Matterport uh, software obviously uh, uh, is reading, when, when, it, when it tries to align a new scan, it is taking into account the marking of mirrors and windows. Windows probably don't matter as much, but mirrors, of course, to the infrared scanner, you look at a mirror and it thinks that there's an opposite room right through that mirror, that it's a hole. And so mark the mirrors, uh, particularly when you have large mirrors and, uh, Particularly large mirrors and small rooms. As soon as you, as soon as you've got a little bit of a scan of that room, mark the best you can where that mirror is on the mini map. Uh, awesome tip. Uh, I suspect there are many Matterporters that uh, have uh, attempted to scan a space, uh, couldn't understand what the problem was, and uh, as soon as you see a large mirror, you know, bingo, you you found the problem. And the way to solve that, as you've described it, is mark the mirror, even if it's an approximation, approx approximate yeah. location, even before you walked in the space so the camera is not confused thinking that there's a whole nother bonus room. room right. There. And, and as soon as you do the next scan, how, how, do, you, how do you do? Was he able to, to do it? Yeah, yeah. Mark the mirror, work perfectly. No, pro no, more, no more problems. All right. Kevin Dole's bonus tips and tricks number three Use single level bowl tripod head for quick leveling. Okay, this is 
<laughs> now we're getting into now. Now I got to knock off the green screen again. Okay. And I, I, I and I think I know where you're going, so I'm going to say, <laughs> caution. Stay tuned for the cautionary note after Kevin describes what he's about to describe. Okay, okay. go ahead. So this is this I carry in addition to a regular size tripod. I carry this little tiny tripod uh, that I got because I find there are times when I need to put the camera either up on a counter or in some weird little corner uh, near a bathtub or something like that in order to get everything as clean as possible. So I carry this tripod with me all the time. It's a, it's a great little tripod made by, once again, newer, newer this Chinese company, making great equipment. Uh, didn't cost very much. The legs can be extended. This thing will go up a little bit anyway. And the separate, separate is this head. I, every Matterport, every tripod I use for Matterport has one of these heads on it. I love this head. <clears throat> and the reason I love it is because you've got a little lever on the side. You just flip that. And this thing, I hope, hope I uh, loosen it enough so it'll move. This is, if you, can, if you can see this clearly, this is a, you know, complete XY bowl rocking thing. It rocks about 10, 10 to 15 degrees, something like that in all directions. Now with the Matterport on top, every time like on stairs or uneven ground, particularly of course, when you do exteriors, you're on grass and all kinds of uneven ground. And, you know, it takes forever if you're gonna adjust three tripod legs to try to get the head level. And I know some people use the, this, this kind of a top head that has like three little screws around the outside and you can crank it up and down and so forth. But with this head, you flip one lever, you, you, you slide, you, you slide this back and forth and you get the camera leveled instantly. I mean, it, it oh, takes me- instead of, in, instead of adjusting the camera, tri, instead of adjusting the tripod legs, you're adjusting just with that bowl. That, that this, this ball level, this bowl level is so fast combined with- I, 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 hold, hold it up again. Cause I, there's, there's two things yeah. I want to ask you about there. Yeah, First, sure. it, uh, if you would, when, when we're done with the show, if you could just uh, email me the, the brand name. Link, link to it, yeah. You even have a link in Amazon. What I'll do is I'll put it in the shop.matterport.com. Uh, we curate, uh, W-E-G-A-N, curate <laughs> all these tips and tricks in terms of gear and accessories. Yeah. And then we just have it all in the shop.matterport.com app. I will really easy to find stuff. I, sh I should add that th this is actually three purchases. It's the little yeah, tripod. Yeah. Send, send, send me all three. But it's I, this, I, I, th this top piece that has the, uh, you know, the, 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 yeah. the lockdown, we, that's we, a separate piece. Yeah. And we do have another bowl yeah. version, but I, I, we'll, we'll get your version in, into the shop.matterport.com app. All sure. three pieces would be great. The cautionary note, if you could just hold it up for one more second, uh, the, it, it, it looks like you have a, is it a, is there a ball head or no? Uh, I, no. Down, down here, there's a ball head that is part of the tripod. It Could comes you show us tripod. what happens with, when that, that, that knob gets loosened with the ball head? Yes, you do not want to loosen this. Okay. Because that, the whole thing can just go over. Boom. That's what I want to say. Cautionary note, using yep. the ball head is if, until you've scanned 300 scans, don't even attempt to use that ball head because you're going to lose your three thousand dollar Matterport yeah. camera. So, yeah. essentially, this ball head would do the same thing as this, but catastrophically. <laughs> catastrophically. So, there, I always keep it tightened up. There, there are a ton of professional Matterporters that swear by their ball head to make it super easy to level a Matterport camera quickly. That said. Those are photographers that have typically worked with the DSLR camera and a yep. ball head way before they used the Matterport. And so they're used to knowing that you can put it down now, Kevin. Thanks. Yep. That they have thousands of dollars of camera that's sitting on top. And exactly. if that lever gets loose, either by choice or not by choice, you could lose your camera and it just topple over. Not and pretty. And the other part of the thing is I mount to the top of all of my Matterport cameras, one of these large- Pull, pull back a sec, let's see. Pull back. Large bubble levels. I can probably show that's it good. a bit. Yep, 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 that's good. Yeah. There we go. 
Okay. Awesome. It's a it's a big it's about a two inch diameter big bubble level. Yeah. And it's okay. let's let's see you with that. We we've seen it up to the ball. And if you would text me that as well, we'll put that in the shop dot matterport. Are you using any kind of sticky something that's connecting the bubble to the camera? Yes, absolutely. I use uh, the gorilla. Everybody knows gorilla tape and gorilla glue. Those things are great. Gorilla makes a double stick tape. Uh, which is the stickiest, gummiest stuff ever. And you put that on there, it'll never come off. All right. So <laughs> I mean, you can take it off if you want to, but it, if you don't mind, Kevin, please send me an email that, that has mm -hmm. those five items, the three pieces related to the, the mini tripod there. Yeah. And the, the Gorilla double-sided tape and the, the bubble as well. Again, we'll put it into shop.matterport.com the app for the We Get Around Network Forum community where we curate all the gear and accessories that makes it easy to find stuff that makes your life easier when you're doing all these things. I, ha I have one other tip to add along, and this yeah. is in the Z1 category. When I, when I use the Z1, of course, I use one of these kind of simple tripods that is basically a stick yeah. and, and, and has legs. I'm, I'm just gonna snap, snap the legs out here. Oh. Pull the thing in the right direction. Yeah, right. Like that. Uh, so it's got legs, and you know the, the Z1 ends up going on top. Um, you know the, the top top piece of it here. There, there, there's the Z1, and I've got the little extender which allows you to, the room necessary to to plug in an external power pack. And I actually use my uh, Insta 360. Uh, uh, regular selfie stick to separate the camera a little bit more fr from the, the tripod to make the legs smaller and so forth. But here's the thing I wanted to show you. I, and I, I just want to point out on that extender, again, for, for anyone that has, has never used a Ricoh Theta Z1, as soon as you buy a Z1 and you have your monopod, as soon as you get to a shoot that exceeds the, the, uh, the length of time that the battery will function, Right. Uh, then you're going to need to have one of those little extensions they are about 20 bucks. And that way you can plug in uh, a battery. So that you then, get access to that. Uh, yeah, US, and then you can tape the battery, USB -C point. tape the battery to the bottom of the bottom of the monopod because you want the weight at the bottom of the monopod and, yep. it, and you won't, you won't see it. It's just part of the, the, the nadir that gets either taken out in Photoshop or covered with the logo or whatever. Exactly. But so this is the very other... important accessory. So it's just, it's just 20 bucks, but you'll, yep. you'll want to have It's critical because you're out, you're out of business once the, the power is gone. Dot, it's in the shop.matterport.com app. Okay. The other thing is there's a lot of different manufacturers of, um, uh, you know, what do you, what do you call these? Uh, they're, not, they're not monopods. What do they call them? I don't know. I call it a monopod. A monopod, but, but it's a but it's a monopod is also something that doesn't have legs. It, you know, it, but it's someplace between a monopod and a tripod. Yeah. But it's a yeah. it's one, but it's got the legs on it. I don't know. I've never heard it called anything else. I I just call it a monopod. Right, and I'm I'm going to show this because I'll, most most of these sort of mono tripods. Uh, uh, you know, they, they're like this, they have three legs, they fold up for storage and moving around and so forth. But very few of them have one of the features that this does, to me, which is priceless. And that is that there is, down at the bottom here, there is a ball. This is a ball socket. So that when you're on uneven ground, on a hillside, that thing can be straight up. This, this ball socket speeds up my shooting with the Z1 tremendously. Awesome, what's that one called? Uh, this particular one, um, I, I have, the name isn't on it and I have forgotten and I believe this one, I'm sorry to say, I believe this one is discontinued. Uh, I, about a year yeah. ago, I, I looked to buy another one of these because I love this so much and uh, I searched all over the internet and I found I found one. What is that your screen? Yeah, yeah I, I'm just. Yeah. Gonna go. I, okay, I, that, that's fine. The shop dot wgan forum. I, I said shop dot matterport. Forgive me. It's shop dot wgan. Oh, great. Dot com. And then if you go in here and select 
uh, let's say, uh, I think under uh, tripods, uh, tripods would make sense, but I think I, I might have put it under 360. Oh, there you uh, go. These are many, many, I call them monopods. And oh, that, there's one that has an angle. Oh. Yeah. So you can click through any of these, it'll take you right to Amazon. Yeah. So, you know, we could go off to, you know, double click on this. Yeah, most of these, yeah, most of these do not have the have the ball socket at the bottom, but there yeah. are some made today that are that yeah. I think do. So now I've clicked through to LinkedIn. There's one. Boom, that's where, where Kevin's describing. So yeah. uh, there are so many of of uh, oh I know why that I, I happen to call this the Matterport gear app, but it's located at shop dot wgan forum.com you oh, can right. scan the qr code off the screen and, and go right there but that's an example of just in the 360 category mm -hmm. of how many different things related you know up there's that that item that yep. Kevin's showing and uh you know if you need a light for for, for uh it, it's really i think it'll save people a lot of time absolutely uh, if i go back over to tripods i think you were talking here's tripod heads uh i think that one is that's that yes that's the that is the that's, type of thing anyway that's yeah. a bowl kind of version yeah and there's uh, the top piece uh this is a bowl version yep so here's a you know a top piece so yep. if there's uh so kevin if you don't mind if you that's send great. us uh, I'll add that we'll add that to the shop.wgaandforum.com i'll add it to it the, this this yeah. this particular one, which has a ball and is was very heavy duty, um, I I think it's been discontinued. I I hunted the internet about a year ago and bought two more just because I was finding it uh, listed as discontinued. So I've got three of them, but yeah. uh, but I'll, I'll I'll look up the name and send it to you anyway. All right, forgive me. I just want to show one more one more thing that's related to this. So I've gone into if if you go up to the if. Uh, go to wganforum.com and if you type in the search box nine tripods, uh, uh, this will go to nine tripods, monopods to consider for your 360 one click camera. There's, there's actually more than nine, but when I did the post, it was originally, it was, it, if I go back to the top of the post yeah. here, it was originally nine and there's links in here. Uh, so you can find a lot of these monopods for 360 cameras uh, with a lot of commentary. There, well, that, that was mine. That's that, that one. Go back. Yeah, that's it. That's the one I have. Just there. Here's Underneath Kevin it. at home 3D. That's uh, Kevin Dole at home. Oh, oh I, I posted that. Sorry. Yeah, so I was going to say there's, there's a lot of really good uh, forum yeah. member posts in here that, that actually went into even even greater detail i mean that's yeah, that there's a demonstration that that, that yeah. uh, of that angle thing right yeah. i forgot i there, forgot i said that, that you know that magic piece so uh and then there's been other members and other videos there's a lot of content just in this one post on this one topic uh and then you know boom that's where we 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 end up uh so yeah uh, anyway hi highly recommend if you're in the market to buy a monopod or a one pole with legs on it. Uh, we've been curating a lot of content either in the forum or in the shop.wganforum.com um, uh, web, website. Okay. Uh, that now, of course, I've lost my place, Kevin. Let me go back to the front page of the forum. I'm going to go back to the post that is promoting today's show. And then I am looking for Kevin Dole bonus tips and tricks. And we are up to Manfrotto tripod with riser to minimize legs. Uh, man, let's see, Manfrotto tripod with riser. I, I know you well, said that, 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 that was just like, I, this particular uh, uh, Manfrotto, oh, that one. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's right around the corner. Can I go grab it? Yeah, yeah, okay. Hang on. So this is great. It's, all, it's almost like two shows in one. The top of the show is 10 advanced outdoor Matterport scanning techniques. And then Kevin had all these bonus tips. We, there's, there's actually nine Kevin Dole bonus tips and tricks. Uh, and uh, I'm reading off the list. It's at wganforum.com. If you type in the search box, wgan-tv, uh, right. advanced 
how to get my headset back on so I can hear you. This, uh, discussion. All right. So I forgot about, I forgot about this. Oh. Yeah, and my, my camera. Tip my camera. number four, Manfrotto tripod with riser to minimize legs. What's that? Okay. Yeah. Okay. So the, I use now only the, the Manfrotto tripod that you recommended, uh, which is this one, the 490, I think it is, that has three... Uh, three adjustments on each leg. It's a great tripod, just just killer. I got uh, I have two of them now. And what I do, of course, when I'm shooting, and I hope I got enough room here. But exactly. the reason I recommended this one, it's a little bit more than the one Matterport recommends. But it's one is it what, once COVID is behind us and we can travel, this one actually collapses small enough to fit in a roller for oh, that's right. Case. And then yeah. the second is you have more options in terms of height. And it's just easier. Did you find a different thing about this? Yeah. Well, here, here's the mic. So, so you've got three three leg adjustments, which is great. Plus, you've got a center riser. Plus, the center riser can be ninety turn ninety degrees to the side. Although, that for, was still, for still camp, you won't. You're not going to do that with Matterport. But, <laughs> but you've got a you've got another about a twelve inch riser down the middle. What I do is I use the tripod this way, typically with a maybe one. One, one leg extended a certain distance, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to come down and show you the top of it. I have a 15 inch, what's called a riser here. This is a piece, it's, a, it's a, a round piece of steel or something with three rods up. It's very rigid yeah, up to another, uh, another round piece. And then I put this same kind of head as you see, uh, the bowl head on the top of that. Um, what this does, uh, is it creates significantly more distance between the Matterport camera and the bottom of the tripod legs. Uh, I used to find uh, uh, before when I was scanning that sometimes the, the tips of the tripod legs appeared on screen. Uh, uh, it, if you look down from the 360 view, this means that I'm spreading the legs less uh, on, on the floor uh, because I've got 15 inches of extra height here and I, I never see that I never see the tripod legs and I can also walk through doorways a lot easier without having to collapse the legs. Two things. One, please do send us the, the, the link for that. If you find the Amazon shopping link, that that's a... Yeah, this was on, I got this on Amazon. I've got two of these. That, that'd be a plus to, to send. The other is uh, warning Will Robinson, <laughs> because now you're, you're adjusting the center of gravity related to the balance of the camera. Do you ever have any nervousness regarding whether you're going to topple the camera because you've made this? I, I don't because I, I'm, still, I'm still using uh, not only, I'm, I'm still using these legs, which from, from the center are out about nine inches, and I'm usually extending down I'm extending down one extension on this. So from the center to the tip of the tripod leg, I'm, you know, 16 inches or something like that. So I've got enough width. I've never had a problem, but yes, you are, you are, you have less spread uh, for stability. So you have to. It's interesting. Cause I've, I've never had the, the tips of the tripod show up in my Matterport tour. So I imagine it's because I'm using that tripod with the extender up above could be so i'm not but, the, yeah. the, but this this extend i have found i have when up on this extension uh extension rod through the middle i have sometimes uh had the camera read out uh you know un, unstable camera uh as it rotates around it, it 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 can it can just flex enough that it uh um I don't know why my camera you just put your hand by the, the camera. That should take the, the focus off. Okay, now remove your hand. It's an autofocus. Ah, thank you. <laughs> a, bo a bonus tip for those. Dan, doing Dan's tips and tricks. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, 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 uh, I want to give you one tip, though, on your tripod. Could you yeah. hold it up again, uh, sure. the bottom of your tripod? Uh, it, and the bottom where you release, you talked about releasing that. So a leg back back to the bottom. Oh yeah, yeah. So right you so if 
if you release the top one first, right. not the bottom one, your tripod's gonna last longer and it's gonna be more stable because you're using the wider part of the tripod. That's true. It's it's slight, slightly more stable that way, but I would I would <laughs> slight thing. I would I would do the middle one as the primary extension. I like to keep the top one initially unused because that way if 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 I'm move, moving my way around a house or in a yard or patio area where the ground is a little bit uneven, ah, it's not completely level, beautiful. I have the top one through which to make slight adjustments, which is the easiest yes. one to reach. Beautiful. Uh, and, and in that case, having the bowl for the adjustment might not be enough of an adjustment and you right. needed to adjust the height of the tripod. Either like on stairways, of course. Stair stairways, stair stairways. Okay, great. Kevin Dole, bonus tips and tricks for a hundred. <laughs> uh, Alex, you hit, you hit the buzzer too quickly. Kevin Dole, bonus tips and tricks. Number, Six, Matterport matter tags for elevators, URLs to oh. internal node positions, command U. Yeah, now can I? <clears throat> uh, tell us what you want to accomplish and then show, maybe you'll show us how you got there or at least tell us what you want to accomplish and then in words describe how you accomplish. Yeah, well, it's, <clears throat> uh, the for people who haven't delved deeply into the program, uh, programming of a tour th throughout a house, you can, um, you can create a Matterport tour. Let, let's, let's say you have a, an office building, for example. Oh, no, no let's, let's just go back to a house. Let's say you have, a, oh, I can think of an example now. Okay, good. Um, if you have a house and um, you, you want to uh, maybe I can just show show an example. That's okay. Or easy. If you want to show commercial space with an elevator. That's yeah. In this in this, in this case, uh, I've actually got a uh, um, residential that I did recently. <clears throat> this is a three three D Vista, not with an elevator, but it shows the same principle. Okay. Uh, so uh, this is I don't remember this the movie or the video. Yeah, here's the tour down here. So this is this is a, a screen's home not in, moving. Are you are you moving it? And it's not did, moving. Did I uh, did I share? Oh yeah, I'm my my. You have my screen. Uh, tell you what, let's. I'm going to take us off sharing. Oh, I, and then why don't you put us back on sharing? Okay. Again, and okay. maybe that'll Share. free up whatever happened. Yeah, I may I may have done the wrong screen or something. Uh, beautiful. That that's so beautiful in itself. Again, that's a whole other show that Kevin did with WGA and TV intro to 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro with Kevin Dole of Home3D.us. This uh, is the one I want to show you. So you're seeing this fly in? Yep. Okay, good. So this is a big property in Malibu. It has as a large house and then two guest houses. Um, and it has it has some uh, it's another one of these outdoor things where you can look around uh, and then you know go up to go up to the house outdoor style uh, 3D Vista. Now I go up to here. Now I'm on the patio, and you can see, you know, so so forth. And I want to go into the house. Now going into the house means I'm going into the Matterport model, but I want to enter the Matterport model at this location in the house. So note what I have when I do this, it, it launches the Matterport model. Well, I'm feed it, and it launches it right at that point. Nothing's launched. Oh, uh, you don't see anything? I just see the, the hero image of the aerial view of the property. I'm at the drone view. You got the drone view, okay. Yeah. Hang on a second. Let me, try, let me try to refresh this and get, just see if it comes No, I know we've been doing so many different tours. I could imagine your Chrome might have. You want to try cr closing I, out of Chrome and reopen? Yeah, I, well, I closed, I closed a few windows. Did you see the new fly in there? No. No, okay. So let's see. Maybe, maybe I'll. 
do this and I'll refresh, uh, I'll, I'll close out Chrome. We may be can, looking at the wrong- I'll make a new window. Yeah, uh, we're probably looking at the wrong window. What do you see now? I see you, Kevin. You see me? Uh -huh. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this. Um, okay, so let me go back to share screen. I'm just gonna share my desktop. Okay. It's a little, little messy, but uh, okay. I'm gonna take a Chrome window, open a Chrome window. There we go. And I'm gonna to go to 24, 24 PCH. And are you seeing this? Yeah, can you resize it to fill your screen? Yeah, thank you. I, I, I can see up, us up in the corner, but pretty pretty much full to fill the screen. Okay. Um, so I wanna go down here to the tour, show you this. <clears throat> uh, so here's the tour uh, and I'm, no, that wasn't what I wanted to do, sorry. Um, let, let, me, let me clean this up for you. You can, you can edit back. I'm gonna, okay. I'm gonna go back just to the Chrome window. Oh, stay with us. This is an amazing technique. Okay. Uh, it's not hard to do if you know how to do it. And Kevin's gonna show you okay. what he's gonna so, accomplish and then so how to accomplish it. So you're seeing my screen now? Yep, we're looking okay. at very okay, good one. Okay, so I'm up to, I've walked across the yard and I'm up to the house and I wanna go into the house, which means I wanna go from the 3D Vista virtual tour into the Matterport. Mm -hmm. If I click, click this link, it opens the Matterport right at that position in the Matterport. And now I can walk into the house. You're seeing this? Yep, how'd you do that? Okay, so, when you're in, um, when you're in the Matterport um, workshop, the edit, the edit window, um, if you navigate in the edit to a in in your model in the Matterport workshop window to a particular position and even the angle at which you want to look in that position, and then you hit, uh, and I have a Mac keyboard. I assume it's pretty pretty similar on uh, PC but command U, letter U like under, command U, a little, a little thing will pop up in the, in the upper right hand corner, uh, which gives you a, an extended URL link. And what that is, is a, uh, a, a URL to the Matterport model, to that particular node within the Matterport model and to the exact direction that that node is looking at that time. Uh, so if you take that and then build it into uh, a navigational link, uh, it'll go right there. You can use that, for example, you can put a matter tag on a first floor of an elevator. Ah, so that's a, a great example. So we're, I think Matterport calls it a, a deep link. A deep link, yes. Deep link, this is how to create a deep link. And then how, how do you use a deep link uh, with an elevator in different floors? Yeah, so for example, I did a house, I, I don't remember the uh, th thing, which had an elevator. And on the first floor, I put a matter tag right on, on the elevator door or right next to it. And if you hover over that tag, it pops up and it says uh, uh, elevator to second floor. And then click to go is, a, is, a, is an operational, uh, you know, uh, a live link tag. And you click on that and it takes you to r the elevator, the hallway right outside the elevator door on the second floor and vice versa. On the second floor, there's a link that takes you to the first floor so that you can, you can use that. Uh, I, I do remember now another model that, so, that I can. So I think the part of the magic of what you're doing here is also you haven't duplicated the Matterport tour and created two different Matterport tours with right. two different hero images. No, it's the same Matterport space, just using this Matterport deep link command U feature to create that deep link of that exact spot with that exact view so that you can fly into the space to the exact point that you want to, which is frequently a tremendous help when you have an elevator and you kind of want to magically give someone a way to go from the elevator first floor to the elevator second floor. And I just remembered uh, a model that has it, uh, okay. Culver Point Tour. 
this is a this is a business park, and <clears throat> as the tour launches, this is another three D vista. Uh, I can go up here. Th these are outdoor things, and this opens the Matterport model of the first floor lobby of this particular building. Look, unfortunately, looking out, but I'm going to go around here and go around here. And again, this what Kevin is also showing this with that 3D Vista introduction. Uh, Kevin did a uh, a WGA and TV live at five called Intro to 3D Vista Virtual Tour Pro with Kevin Dole and Home3D.us. And Kevin did a lot of mashups with Matterport and 3D Vista Pro. Yeah, okay, we're at the elevator. You're going to show a deep link. <clears throat> yeah. So the, so they the the commercial uh, broker wanted to show the exterior amenities of this building, how you walk between the two buildings. Um, they have a big oversized ch chess board out there and a billiard table and a whole bunch of fun stuff. And the suite that they hope to uh, rent out in this building is, is suite 350. So click to go on this and it takes you, boom, to the suite and I think I, I included the fly-in, but it basically takes you, here's the, here's the front door of that suite. Uh, and, uh, you know, so, so you, you're there. Uh, I also, it, it also, this is, a, uh, this is a, uh, a building that had two, there were two office buildings. And so I also put a link here, transport, th this would transport you to the lobby of the 400, there's a 600 building and a 400 building. And this one would will trans you to the lobby of the uh, the other building, as, as awesome. you see here. So that's Matterport and and, and multiple and multiple ele elevator links here. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So that's that's uh, tip number six: Matterport matter tags for elevators, URLs to internal <laughs> node positions. Essentially, a deep link using the command U to get that uh, URL. That's great. Right. So, uh, Kevin, uh, Kevin Dole, bonus tips and tricks. Number seven, you have a favorite iPad case. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I always use an iPad. I, I, I put my iPad in one of these cases that you slip your hand into. And uh, I, I, have, I have one that I, I really like using now that has a, a recessed holder for the, uh, the Apple Pencil so that I won't lose it. Um, I'm using a fairly new iPad, uh, you know, the one where the pencil magnetically sticks onto the case and the magnetic process works right through the case and so forth. I can send you the link to that case. Uh, that would be great. And we, we, where we will put that is in shop.wganforum.com. And you can see- if it's, you very, in, yeah, it's very on, similar to this. Yeah. yeah, if you go into the menu and you go into iPad holders, yep. You'll we'll see, here's one, here's one, here's one. You may already have it, except I don't see that those have a place for the, for the pencil. Uh, uh, there, there are so many of these. It's there are. Um, uh, amazing. And uh, I know some people like to have the strap over their head. That way they free up their two hands to yep. carry a Matterport camera. Yep. Uh, there are, and many of these have come because there've been- that, that's, members, that's, This is sort of similar to mine. Yeah, there've the been members in the We Get Around Network forum that have suggested- Wait, a, wait a minute, that last, one, that last one at the bottom, I think is the one that I'm using. That one? I, I, that's it right there. Yeah, look at the price, $26. And yeah, it's, you can click rubber bumpers on the corners. You know, go off great. to Amazon and, and, and see it there. Anyway, that is shop.wganforum.com. Uh, and we, again, every time somebody mentions gear in the forum and they're all excited about it, uh, uh, we put it into the shop.wganforum.com. Yeah. Um, oh, I, gosh, Kevin, I lost my place again. Favorite iPad case, uh, favorite door stops. Uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll send you the link to the, my favorite door stops. <laughs> okay. And, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and as for the favorite wheels, it's the wheels that you recommended about a year ago. Uh, uh -oh. The ones from, made by Newer. Okay, so actually I'm gonna go back to shop.wganforum.com and then, uh, oh, I'm sorry, I, it, I just drifted off. Um, it was door stops and, uh, and uh, tripod wheels. Door stops. I, I actually have a category in here called door stops. Mm -hmm. uh, and this, ha this is my favorite. Uh, really, I, I haven't tried those yet. Okay, 
So if you got some favorite doorstops, send yeah. them. The, the, I've actually written at length on this doorstop because it will hold up like a, you know, the heaviest door in a commercial space. And I use, Very interesting. I found these so helpful. So how do you, I don't know, how do you describe it? They go in the door jam where the hinge is and it goes over the hinge oh. and, and then the door can't possibly close. And if you oh. have, I, I used it, I had a, a space, the wind was so strong and the doors were so heavy. When I put these stops in, the doors remained open, didn't have a problem. The That's other right. thing is you can slide it under the door. There's different ways and they come in different colors. Yeah. I, I, they're, they're, I, again, I could do a whole show. Just I'm, I'm going to get some of those. All right. What was, what was the other topic? The other, we, the other one was the tripod wheels. And uh, you recommended about a year ago, the, the wheels made by newer that, um, that fold up. That's it right there. That one? And, and th those have been, those have been really good. Uh, the, 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 uh, th those are the exact wheels that I use. Again, uh, 40 bucks. Uh, yeah. this, this thing spreads out. Uh, so you put your tripod here. Here's it extended your tripod, you know, nicely fits. Let's see if we have a little notch. Yeah. Tripod fits in there. Yeah. And uh, when, when do you like using, when yeah. do you like using that? And the, the ones, that, the ones I've got are, are, uh, almost identical. It's a different, it's the newer brand name as opposed to the Delita or whatever that said, uh -huh. but, uh, there are a couple caveats. Uh, the, the tripod, the tripod legs, the bottom of the tripod leg goes into like a little clamp thing that you, that you screw and tighten up. And I have found that you do a big warehouse and you're driving around all days, those things unscrew themselves. Uh, to, to the point that the tripod leg will slip out. So about every once an hour or something, I'll bend down and crank them up tight again. Uh, the other thing I found is that the the caster itself, if this is the edge of the the, the wheel mechanism, there's a, there's a ca the caster has a quarter inch or th three eighths inch thread that goes up into the uh, the leg of the wheels, the, the, uh, the, the spreader part. And that will actually unscrew uh, get loose itself sometimes to the point that the wheel will uh, fall off of the uh, spreader. So you got to take a wrench and really tighten them up. So be careful. And, yeah. uh, 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 you know, when do you use these? When, when you have a lot of flat, uh, you know, you, you were showing your commercial space there. I, I imagine those big open spaces. Doing, doing a 50,000 square foot best buy for eight hours, you use the wheels. Yeah, can't, can't use it typically in a house where the furniture and the shag carpet or the, you know, right. whatever it is, but you're doing a commercial space and it's wide open. Yeah. Uh, it, it, for 40 bucks, it'll make your life uh, easier. You'll get done. Scanning. You, hit, you hit a stairway or steps, you got to take them off, but yeah. it's, it, but it's worth it for big flat spaces. All right, Kevin, we've covered a lot of ground today. Yeah. 10 advanced outdoor matter port scanning techniques. Uh right. Kevin Dole's bonus tips and tricks. I think we did nine. Whoa, we've been we've been talking here for more than two hours. Uh, I'm still going to ask you: Is there anything that we didn't talk about on the show that we should cover? <clears throat> Not that I can remember at the moment, Dan. Okay, so um, I, you know, I I I, I will say. Um, you know, my, my wife is probably upstairs cooking right now, wondering where, where I, I am, but you know, you and I, like, th this is like a great show because we're, this is interesting stuff. I, I, you know, my wife, I know she'll, she won't even watch 10 seconds of it, but right. you know, I, I, and I, I know <laughs> oh, we, we don't get a huge number of people watching, but I would say, you know, for the handful of us that have, you know, stuck with us, there's been, you know, at least 20 rock solid, you know, tips, tricks, advanced techniques to just advance the craft. And, and so I am yeah. so grateful, Kevin, that you've, you've taken the time, you've hung in there to, to take yeah. us through all this. So ha happy to, Dan. It's always, it's always a pleasure. It, it, I have learned so much over the last four years from being on your forum and reading as many posts as I have time for. Uh, it's just, it, it's just invaluable. Uh, so I talk you up whenever I can. Whenever I hear somebody new is trying out Matterport, I say, start by signing up to WGAM. Thank you. Uh, Kevin, again, thanks for being on the show. We've been visiting with Kevin Dole. Kevin is the founder of Home3D.us uh, in the We Get Around Network forum. It's at home 3 d uh, Kevin is based in Los Angeles. He's uh, obviously is 
uh, doing Matterport on steroids. He's, he's taking it to the next level of mashing it up with things like 3D Vista Pro. You'll find Kevin in the We Get Around Network forum. Uh, uh, again, Kevin, thanks so much. Uh, I'm Dan Smigrod, founder of the We Get Around Network forum, and you've been watching WGAN TV Live at five. Kevin, we got to do a little thumbs up here for our, our thumbnail. A thumbnail, thumbs up. <laughs> no, we got to have. Yeah. Uh, yeah.